All right, so today we're going to start off the 2024 season kind of right, I guess. And I've taken basically three weeks of close to nothing. I mean, I, I did a bit of a swim camp with Jerry. I've done a few little kind of activation sessions, but for the most part, I've taken three weeks super chill. So we're gonna start off the preparations next week. I really start to, what I think to be the preparations for 2024 with a little bit of intensity. And we're gonna start it off with a lactate test. Um, I don't really use lactate anymore, but I think it's better to gather the data and not need it than need it and not have it. And so we're going to do a lactate test today. We're, Jerry and I have bounced ideas back and forth. Jerry consulted with a, a PhD physiologist as to what is a good protocol to use and I think we've kind of, from a use value and training standpoint, if we were to try and take some data from this and, and um, use it to guide training, the best protocol for us to do is six times 400. We're in a yards pool. So those will start off. What we'll do is swim like really easy and then maybe try and drop it by about 10 seconds per 400 or two and a half seconds per 100 each rep. And then the sixth one being basically as, as fast as I can go. And then we will take a lactate after all six of those and we will uh, plot the lactate to speed and it will allow us to see the lactate curve. And then Mark Gravelin is gonna help us out and actually use math and try and kind of find the inflection point of that curve which should coincide with the lactate threshold so that is kind of our goal to at least see where we're at and then my other goal is this is a bit of an accountability thing too and what i would like to do is do this every six to eight weeks and we may not use the data we may not observe any changes but then again, we may observe changes and we may use the data. So it's better to have the data and not need it than need it and not have it. And so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to start things off right with a swim lactate test, repeat it again in let's just say eight weeks, train some more, repeat it again in another eight weeks. And what we would hope to be seeing if the training is working is of course, we would hope that the lactate threshold is going up or the inflection point is going up or said another way, we would hope that the lactate curve is moving to the right, meaning we would be going faster in eliciting lower lactates at faster speeds. So that is the goal. You can do whatever you want if you want to do a lactate test. I'm sitting on now close to a thousand lactate readings on myself, so I do have a decent sense of lactate and how to use it and how I, my body behaves lactate wise. You can do whatever you want, quite quite honestly. Uh, what you want to do when constructing a test, I think, is make it applicable to training. So the longest reps we're going to do in practice are probably going to be around 400. That's for the time being anyway. That's the longest reps we'll do. And so um, that's what caused me to choose 400s. I also think if we did a shorter rep, um, we could fake it a little bit. Like some days you swim really good hundreds or really good twos. Fours are a bit harder to have like these outlier performance days. Uh, and so I think for me, from a specificity of training standpoint, I think using 400s is good. And why are we using six reps? Uh, the reason is so that we have six points on the lactate curve and it allows us to better ascertain if we wanna use the, the words the Norwegians use, the LT1 or the like exercise baseline and the LT2, which basically coincides to the lactate threshold. It'll be, I think, fascinating also to standardize what rep in the 400 we record, and I think we'll standardize it, let's say, as from 100 to 125, and you'll be able to see first in this first test how I break down, how my technique changes, how I, aggressive I get as I try to swim harder, and then hopefully, long term, we'll actually be able to see an improvement in that, in that I'll be swimming faster, let's say 16 weeks from now, and you won't really be able to tell. That's the mark of the good guys. They, you, don't, you can't really tell that they're swimming a lot faster because all the work's happening under the water, the power's under the water. And that's something I, in myself, and I think many weaker or developing swimmers greatly lack.
So now we're gonna do 400. This one's gonna be super, super light. Call it 60% okay. effort. So target probably around five, 540. Ish, so we can go 540, 530, or 525, 550. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what we'd be looking to do here now. One point four. So it went down. So now we're like at still at ex exercise baseline now, or actually it might even lower even more. We'll do these on seventy seconds total rest. We'll standardize that just for the lactate to make sure we have time to get the lactate. We don't want to clear all the lactate though. Rep two, 517. Average heart rate probably around 109. Lactate of 1.6. 506. Heart rate now, getting there. We're working now, starting to work. 118 heart rate, lactate 1.9. 457. So 115's-ish. I mean, right now, that, that's about threshold. 2.2. Yeah, we're knocking on the door now. It's getting hard now. <laughs> I'm deteriorating. It's a tough set. 3.2. <clears throat> well, I mean, that's... This actually highlights how lactate, I find, is of very little value to a developing swimmer. Three seconds quicker. 4.47. Four seconds quicker, 4.5 millimole. Massive increase in output, virtually no increase in speed, and one second per hundred or less increase in speed, which I think is a huge, at least at this stage of the season and this stage of development, why these types of focus on physiological metrics for weak swimmers anyway, or developing swimmers, very little value you know what i mean you need 4.5 uh, to go one second quicker i mean you're you're burning pure carbs now mark gravelin our uh head of aerodynamics and data analysis has created us a nice graphical depiction of the results of the swim lactate test so here on the left this is the blood lactate level here on the right this is heart rate on the bottom, this is swim speed in meters per second or yards per second. I think it's in meters. And then just so we understand also kind of the actual interval time, we see here what the average pace for the interval was. And we see here what the average heart rate for the interval was. And then all six of the results are graphed and we start to get a sense of what the lactate profile is. So the lactate relative to swim speed and Mark was able to use what's known as the D-max method to then uh, calculate what the inflection point of this curve is. And that inflection point is thought to represent the uh, lactate threshold or LT2. And so as you can see here, that coincides with a little over two millimole and an, uh, a swim speed of around 115 per 100 yards. So when you're below that, you are you know, sub threshold. And when you're above that, you see that the lactate is starting to build exponentially uh, to, based on how far above it you are. And so it'll be interesting over the next eight weeks to, you know, have a sense of this and then create training protocols to hopefully the goal being to move this entire curve over to the right, which would result in quicker swim, swim speeds at lower blood lactate levels and lower heart rates. And really that is the goal of training. And so this is the beginning of the 2024 preparations. And so it will be interesting to see if we are able to use both training protocols and technical pieces to improve this curve. Thanks for watching.